This is news breaking from the American Heart Association. We are announcing it for the first time right here. We're back now with a new warning today from the American Heart Association. De los Estados Unidos, la doctora Regina Benjamin, miembro directivo del American Heart Association. Case studies indicating COVID may lead to heart attacks. Joining me right now is Dr. Mitchell Elkin. He's president of the American Heart Association. Have you joined the Boss Family workouts recently with Twitch and Allison? I mean, we love those two from So You Think You Can Dance, Ellen, and Dancing with the Stars. But now they have teamed up with the American Heart Association. It's live with Kelly and Ryan. Years ago, the American Heart Association revised their out-of-hospital CPR protocol, and it's called hands-only CPR. She's now sharing her story as part of the American Heart Association's Don't Die of Doubt campaign. This is all about the American Heart Association's healthy bond for life. Late today, the American Heart Association putting out an advisory to pediatricians. As sales of marijuana soared during the pandemic, a new warning from the American Heart Association. Tonight, the American Heart Association sounding the alarm. A new report from the American Heart Association. Heart disease, the number one killer of men and women here in the U.S. and worldwide. So when the American Heart Association puts out a scientific statement, people tend to pay attention. Según la Asociación Americana del Corazón, hay tres factores que contribuyen a padecer del COVID complicado o fatal. And joining me is Dr. Mariel Jessup, the American Heart Association's top medical officer. Dr. Michelle Albert is president of American Black Cardiologists. She's working with the American Heart Association to research COVID in black women. Dr. Larry Mittenall is an American Heart Association volunteer. Can't see before Michael McDonald tonight talks with the CEO of the American Heart Association about surprise medical bills. This is why I love the American Heart Association. They step up in real time to address a need.
Welcome to the Central Kentucky Heart Ball. Thank you, Dr. Everett McCorvey, Director of Opera at the University of Kentucky, and his wife, soprano Alicia Helm McCorvey, accompanied by pianist Dr. Tedrin Blair Lindsay. What a beautiful way to start our evening. I'm Jennifer Palumbo from LEX 18 and Best of the Bluegrass. I'm so happy to be here with you for our first virtual Heart Ball. Fortunately, we're so close to being able to gather in person, hug our family and friends, and celebrate life's important moments with the people who matter most. Seeing so many of you joining us tonight, it's a testament to how strongly you believe in the work of the American Heart Association. Many things have changed in the past year, but one thing has remained constant, the relentless work of the American Heart Association across the country and here in Central and Eastern Kentucky. This organization pivoted quickly to address the COVID pandemic, working to support patients, caregivers, and medical researchers in unprecedented times. During the last year, the AHA has funded millions of dollars to accelerate scientific research on COVID-19, issued new guidelines to help frontline healthcare workers do their jobs safely, and so much more. But we still have a lot of work to do. 
As we recover from this pandemic, rates of heart disease and stroke are expected to rise dramatically, making the work of the American Heart Association more important than ever. But we can't do it alone. My husband Joey and I support the American Heart Association, and I've been with you at several heart balls to help raise money and celebrate the work of the AHA. And even though things are different this year, we are still united in our desire to make a difference. Please join me in thanking our sponsors for tonight's event. Presenting sponsor, White Greer and Maggard Orthodontics, Russell Capital Management, Baptist Health, UK Healthcare, CHI St. Joseph Health, Keeneland, Kentucky Children's Hospital, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, Tower Hill Insurance, Setzer Properties, Commonwealth Credit Union, Lexington Heart Specialists, Georgetown Community Hospital, Denton's Bingham Greenbaum, Central Bank, Ball Homes, Alltech, and our virtual table sponsors. Tonight would not be possible without them. This is a special night for the American Heart Association nationally. It is Founders Day. The AHA started on June 10th, 1924, believing that scientific research could lead the way to better treatment, prevention, and ultimately a cure. And to celebrate, we have a fantastic evening planned for you to continue the work started 97 years ago today. A bit of housekeeping before we get started. For the best heart ball experience, please participate through Chrome. If you see a circle on your screen, don't worry, it's just your computer refreshing your feed. If you're at a watch party, please make sure that each viewer is logged into their own personal device. If you're worried about audio coming from multiple devices, you can simply mute all but one of them. This allows you and your guests to view on one screen, but participate on your personal devices under your own accounts. This is very important for when we get to the bidding and live auction portions of the evening. If you need any help tonight, please comment in the blue bubble above the chat box and event staff will help answer your questions. Throughout the night, you can donate to support the American Heart Association's life-saving mission. On your screen now and throughout our program, below me in the blue box, you'll see prompts where you can donate and participate in the live auction. Please be generous. Every dollar we raise tonight means more Kentuckians will have the opportunity for a healthier future. For our table hosts, I hope you're enjoying your VIP party box sponsored by Commonwealth Credit Union. Thank you as well to Liquor Barn, Dr. Kim Rosenstein, Robert Rosenstein, and Equus Run Vineyards for the donation of wine. Thank you also to Commonwealth Credit Union and UK Healthcare for their work alongside the American Heart Association in training Barbasol Championship volunteers in hands-only CPR for the upcoming PGA Championship in Lexington. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Greg White, representing the 2021 Central Kentucky Heart Ball, presenting sponsor White, Greer & Maggard Orthodontics. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Central Kentucky Heart Ball. My name is Greg White, and on behalf of White Group Haggard Orthodontics, the presenting sponsor of tonight's event, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you all. This, another virtual event, as we've grown very accustomed to over the last year or so, uh, it's growing a bit wearisome, but uh, next year I am very hopeful that we'll be back together again. Uh, to get reacquainted, to be able to see one another in person, and to continue to support this great organization that helps so many of us. It has affected me personally, as I have lost a parent and a grandparent to heart disease, as has affected many of you all listening and watching tonight. It has also affected many of the folks within the White Group Maggard organization, and that's the reason we're so proud to be a part of this event. I have been, uh, along with my wife, a chair of uh, the Heart Ball for two years in the past, and it is something that's been very rewarding for me personally, and uh, so proud to be a part of it. So enjoy tonight, have a great time, and at this point in time, I'd like to introduce the 2021 co-chairs of tonight's event, Jack and Carol Russell. Thank you all for joining us tonight and for your support of the American Heart Association. We're really honored to chair this event and raise the life-saving funds for heart disease and stroke education and research. Though things are really different this year, the cause we have come together to support tonight is more important than ever. We're reminded of that as we honor Tom Hammond and pay tribute to Carol Barr. 
This event would not be possible without our incredible Heartball leadership team, who have helped us accomplish so much this year, all while navigating a changing world and event landscape. Thank you to the leadership team and for all of you for your commitment to the health of our community. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Greg, and thank you to Jack and Carol for their leadership of this event. Now, here is Tony Houston from CHI St. Joseph Health. Although I'm new to my role at CHI St. Joseph Health, my family has deep roots in Kentucky, and I'm very familiar with the area and the work of the American Heart Association. We are pleased to support this year's virtual heart ball in honor of Tom Hammond and Carol Barr. In 2008, CHI St. Joseph Health partnered with the American Heart Association for Go Red for Women and today stand as the longest continuous cause partner in the country for Go Red. In these last 13 years, we have worked with the American Heart Association to focus an educational spotlight on the importance of recognizing and treating the symptoms of heart disease. As we look forward to this year together, I look forward to meeting many of you and to collaborate and elevate the messaging of the American Heart Association. Thank you and enjoy this evening's Heart Ball. Welcome to the Bluegrass, Tony, and thank you to CHI St. Joseph Health for helping us make a difference in Central and Eastern Kentucky. Now we're going to have some fun. Let's take a minute to check out the chat box on the right hand corner of your screen. We're going to be interacting there tonight, so let's get started. I'd like to see where you're logging in from. Type your location in the chat box now. Love it. Looks like we have people watching from all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. Also, we want to see your faces. So take a selfie or a group photo of your watch party and post to hashtag CentralKYHeartBall and tag at HeartKentucky. A reminder that if you're bidding on any of the fabulous silent auction items, keep going. The silent auction will be open until tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you haven't checked it out yet, please do. The link is in the chat box. Now, it's my pleasure to share an important initiative the American Heart Association is working on with White, Greer & Maggard Orthodontics. I'm Claire, um, I'm 16, I'm a junior. Well, I started vaping when I was probably in eighth or ninth grade. Um, it started through sports. Honestly, just people on my team, like that was who I was with most of my time. I, I didn't like it at first, it hurt, I coughed. I was like, I was like, this is icky. I think we need to deal with mental health and the reason why people are using. Personally for me, vaping was a way to have something else like use to cope with my mental health, to cope with my depression, to cope with my anxiety. I would go through three pods a day, which would be like my pods held, held about like two milliliters. And so two milliliters of juice, if you like look it up, is equivalent to like a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. And so technically I was inhaling three packs worth of nicotine. I got so scared, but I was too scared to tell anyone that this was happening to me because I knew I was gonna get in trouble. I hated it. And yet the addiction was so strong that I kept using. And my parents, they did not have the reaction I thought. My mom was like, like she sat me down and I talked to my mom and my dad for like a solid like two hours. Life is not easy, like school's not easy, friendships are not easy, but you need to make it through this hard point in your life so that you can have your future and addictive chemicals aren't gonna help you get there. It's not gonna get you to where you wanna be. White Greer Maggard Orthodontics is proud to support the American Heart Association's anti-vaping efforts in Central Kentucky. Vaping is an increasing epidemic among teens, with e-cigarette use more than doubling among middle and high school students over the last few years. The sad fact is, one in five high schoolers vape. While vaping might seem safer than smoking cigarettes, the nicotine in vape pods can cause an increase in blood pressure and heart rate and an airing of the arteries, as well as irritability, mood swings, anxiety, impulsivity, and learning difficulties. 
That is why White Green Maggard Orthodontics is working alongside the American Heart Association to educate people throughout Central Kentucky on the harmful effects of vaping. Thank you for your support of these important efforts. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson and White Greer and Maggard Orthodontics. Now, I would like to introduce Bill Sisson from Baptist Health. I'm Bill Sisson, president of Baptist Health Lexington, and we're proud to be a sponsor of this year's Central Kentucky Heart Ball. We're also excited to share in the celebration of this year's honoree, Tom Hammond. Many of us know Tom and everyone feels like they know Tom because of his decades of calling the action for so many great sports moments. After growing up in Lexington and working here, Tom began calling SEC basketball in 1980 and continued that role for 29 years. In 1984, Tom was chosen to host the Breeders' Cup. It was supposed to be a one-shot deal, but led Hammond to begin being NBC's lead voice on thoroughbred racing for 33 years. Then on the NBA and the biggest events in the summer and winter Olympics, among many others. But you get the picture. All that time while Tom's international profile was getting bigger and bigger, he said no to the pool of bright lights in big cities staying right here in Lexington and helping this community and its causes whenever he was asked to. Another thing Tom can attest to is you can get world-class health care right here. Following the results of a stress test, Tom was referred to a cardiologist doing a heart catheterization to see if he might need a stent. Tom's arteries collapsed and he was rushed to the operating room for double bypass surgery. Through the quick actions of highly trained medical staff and advancements in the diagnosis and treatment of heart disease, Tom was able to fully resume his incredibly active lifestyle. Tom's amazing professional accomplishments and his personal journey should, should remind all of us of the importance of supporting research in the fight against heart disease and the amazing men and women we have on the front line of that battle. Tom, we're better off because of what you've done for us and we're grateful that you've allowed us to show you our appreciation. <music> I know we met at Keeneland. There was a radio show. Jim Host had a radio show today at Keeneland. And it was Tom Hammond and Kay Wood Ledford, two icons. Tom talked to Jim Host and they hired me. I was only 23 or 24 years old and they hired me to go on that radio show with them on today at Keeneland. And that's, that's the first thing I ever did in radio. And the first thing I ever did in TV was because of Tom Hammond. You know, Tom's been a, a great friend to me. He's been somebody I've turned to at times for advice and counsel, uh, and he's always been there. And I think, you know, he's been a great uh, mentor for a lot of young broadcasters coming up that were certainly here in Kentucky because they, they saw the work that he did. He's covered a lot of things that he never followed as he was coming up just as a sports fan, but he had a, such a tremendous commitment to the professionalism that he was gonna do the job very well and he was gonna be prepared. I will say this, this guy is the single best sports person as a broadcaster, as a national personality that has ever been from Kentucky. I mean, to be the voice of the uh, International Olympics uh, in track and field and in swimming and in gymnastics and in the other sports that he's done. And he's become an expert in all of them. And he did such an outstanding job that it led to a long-term relationship for him with NBC. And um, it was uh, very fortuitous for NBC. They got a, a great employee. Hey Tom, John Miller here. Just wanted to congratulate you on this honor and to thank you for all your contributions to NBC Sports, specifically all of our horse racing efforts. In addition to that, our track and field, Olympics, Notre Dame, you name it. 
You were such a key player for us and we all appreciate your effort and the tremendous work you did. And I appreciate personally how much you taught me about the sport of horse racing as well. We wish you luck and congratulations on this great honor and take care. Bye-bye. So happy to see Tom honored by the American Heart Association. Tom's been my friend and mentor for more than 20 years and he's the best kind of friend to have because he's kind, he's generous, he's supportive, and best of all, he'll have one with you. I'm proud of you, Tom, and I'm really happy for you and for this recognition. Hi, Tom. Hi, everyone. Sorry I can't be there tonight, but it seems appropriate that my travels have brought me here to Cleveland and the only Hall of Fame that Tom is not a member of. That's only because his parents would not buy him a guitar when he was a little boy, so he had to hone that wonderful voice and become one of the great sportscasters of all time. Hi, this is Chris Collinsworth, just wanting to congratulate the great Tom Hammond. Nobody in my life has had more to do with my figuring out at least slightly what to do in broadcasting than Tom Hammond. He tortured me in my early days together when we worked at Notre Dame. But he kept beating on me for so long, I finally made a career out of it. And he is the absolute greatest. Tom, congratulations. I love you. You're one of my best friends ever, and I am so happy that you're being honored here tonight. Tom, as I said, Tom's a big man. He has a big heart and a big love for his family. Sheila, his wife, Chris, David, and Ashley, the kids, and all the grandkids now, that, that's Tom's life. So thank you so much for honoring my dad tonight, and thank you to the American Heart Association. Through the years, you've been uh, an inspiration to us. You've taught uh, all of us about uh, integrity, honesty, being passionate about something and pursuing that uh, to the fullest. And uh, these days, you're also teaching us how to take care of yourself and how to take care of that ticker. When uh, my dad's emergency bypass happened uh, several years ago, I was out in Vegas and you feel a bit helpless being thousands of miles away. But uh, one thing that gave me comfort was uh, the great care taken by his doctors, nurses, and all the rehab specialists that he continues to deal with to this day. And I know he's super grateful for that as well. And they have been supported behind the scenes, no doubt, all the way by the American Heart Association. So we are so grateful for that. And you won't find a more grateful person than my father. One of the truly great sports voices of all time, a Kentucky man with great Kentucky roots who went on to national and international acclaim as one of the truly great sportscasters of all time. I don't know how you could want a better legacy than that. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this virtual Heart Wall this year. I'd like to first of all thank uh, Bill Sisson for that introduction. Uh, Baptist Health, of course, is one of the sponsors of this event. And just as a plug for Bill's Central Baptist Hospital here in Lexington, uh, until the pandemic, for almost 20 years, I went to his cardiac rehab lab three times a week to exercise and, and the people there are just wonderful. And thanks too to the friends who came by to say all those nice things about me, most of them untrue, uh, would I have to say that, uh, that they're very generous in their comments. Most of them are untrue, but they are appreciated, certainly. And, uh, and also to my family, you know, the older I get, uh, the more I realize that the best things in one's life, family and friends. And so they're both on display here tonight and I appreciate it. And thanks to all of you too for coming to this virtual Heart Ball, but most of all for your support of Heart Health and of course of the American Heart Association. Family, friends, and health, those are the three things that I like to focus on these days. And you're helping with the health part of it and I appreciate your support of the American Heart Association and your attendance at this virtual Heart Ball. Thank you, Tom. On behalf of all of my colleagues at LEX 18, thank you for all you have done for Kentucky and our community. We honor your work and your commitment to our community. Now, we'll switch gears for a quick message about another important initiative, Making a Difference. Once again, Kentucky Children's Hospital will partner with Cincinnati Children's Hospitals as sponsors of the 2021 bring a ball to the ball effort, even during a virtual heart ball. This is our fourth year as sponsor, and with your help, we have delivered over 1,000 sports balls during that time 
encouraging more physical activity in young patients. I am pleased to donate the first sports balls to the American Heart Association and ask that you join us by bringing your sports balls to the American Heart Association on Waller Avenue starting June 14th. Mike, you ready for the first ball? Okay, here we go. All right, that was a Tom Brady pass, and now Michael Jordan. There you go. Thank you. Thank right. you, Dr. Backer. You're welcome. Yeah. And we appreciate Kentucky Children's Hospital and Cincinnati Children's Hospital for your ongoing support of this effort. And I look forward to delivering these balls with all the balls we collect over the next couple weeks to kids in Eastern Kentucky to promote physical activity. Thank you, Dr. Backer. Thank you, Mike. Thank you to Cincinnati Children's Hospital and the University of Kentucky Children's Hospital for their support of this meaningful effort. If you have not done so, please drop your donated sports ball off at the American Heart Association office at 354 Waller Avenue. Our community suffered a sudden and tragic loss last June when we lost Carol Barr. Carol was an amazing wife, mother, friend, and a longtime supporter of the American Heart Association. She and her husband, Congressman Andy Barr, attended the 2020 Heart Ball. Here are Carol's family and friends in tribute to Carol. She was very athletic, uh, very energetic, and just a barrel of fun. Carol, even as a youngster, had so many friends that um, she knew how to be a friend. She was so positive and encouraging. She was a friend to everyone. Um, she was just fun, fun to be around. She was bulletproof, uh, but with that being said, uh, with the COVID, she, she was scheduled to go to the doctor, I understand, but she didn't make it. God wanted her more than we did. What I have learned through this is that there are unique issues associated with women and that that has become a more important issue to me through this. And I, I like that the Go Red movement is about um, linking these issues to unique issues associated with women. I miss her smile. I miss uh, our chats on the phone. Sometimes we didn't agree about with everything as father and daughter wouldn't, but I do miss the phone calls and, and our relationship. If I had more time with Carol, I think the main thing would be just to tell her how much I loved her. She is clothed in strength and dignity. And she laughs without fear of the future. And that is taken from Proverbs. But that's, that exactly exemplifies what my uh, daughter was and is in my heart. The American Heart Association is working with Congressman Barr to further research in mitral valve prolapse and reach girls in Eastern Kentucky with STEM education and scholarships in honor and tribute to Carol Barr. If you would like to support this initiative, contact Mike Turner at the American Heart Association. Stories such as Carol's are at the heart of what we do. We are inspired to make a difference in her honor. Now, I want to share the amazing survivor story of Matt Varga. I was at Honeywood on a Saturday morning and um, I just felt like garbage. Like I felt drained, but I, I, work, I work a lot. You know, I, I mean, I, I worked at Honeywood. I was out here a little bit. I was uh, at another one of our restaurants. I was basically at three restaurants every week. He's a workhorse. His work ethic is second to none. He is used to being strong as an ox, so taking the load on and being that person on the team that's really you know, carrying a lot of the weight. That's Matt's role. That's the role he likes to play. He likes to be the hero. And I just felt like really worn down and like kind of beat, really fatigued. And I'm not usually like that. I'm usually pretty much get up and go. I mean, you're tired, you're tired, but you know, I, I felt especially beat down and I couldn't go any, you know, I just, I basically, I couldn't stand, I, I really couldn't stay on my feet. So, and then he started feeling worse and worse and worse. Well, he, in typical Matt fashion, drove himself to the hospital and, uh, you know, he went, he, he went into sepsis. Uh, so his entire bloodstream was infected 
They shut him down and put him into a medical coma, and we didn't think he was going to live. I went downhill really quick. For somebody not too many days before he came in the hospital was uh, basically sous chefing. Uh, he, he was the sickest of the sick. The first time I visited and saw Matt in the hospital was actually that day, and he was catatonic, uh, for lack of a better word. I've never seen um, that many uh, IV pumps in such a small space. It, it was quite um, moving, just, just a scene. Um, I was a little nervous that that was the last time I was going to see him and they transferred me over to University of Kentucky and then the LVAD went in. Um, I was diagnosed with viral myocardiopathy. L LVAD is the left ventricular assist device. So what it does is it not only offloads the heart, sucks out the blood out of the heart, so, but also dump the blood back into the system so the kidneys and the liver and all the you know, brain. Uh, gets enough blood flow. There, it, it was a lot of emotion, obviously, you know, because I knew I wasn't going to be able to just get up out of bed and walk out of the hospital. Like, it was going to be a lot of time away from, from work and obviously was happy to, very happy to be alive. They, put, they listed me and a week and a half later, a week and three days, actually, they gave me the phone call. After, after his LVAD, about a year later, he ended up undergoing heart transplant, which he handled really well. He went from condition to condition to condition, his conditions kept getting better and better and better, and before long, I got the call from um, Sean Willoughby, who is the chef at Windy Corner, saying, hey, Matt Fargan wants to come back to work. I'm like, well, you think he could call me first? <laughs> I think he was scared that I would say, no, <laughs> you cannot come back to work. But his doctor cleared him. Um, so it, it's a joy. I can't tell you, but it is a joy to have him back. It's, well, it's made me realize that I um, can't take life for granted. And I'm obviously very lucky to have um, the care that I had at the University of Kentucky. I'm grateful every day for being able to get up and grab my chef knives and come to work and, and be able to produce, produce nice food and work for a great company and be with people that I care for and then be able to go out and enjoy our, our beautiful state, hiking, fishing, hunting. I would like to say thank you to the American Heart Association for everything that they have done um, in the past and in the present and uh, going forward to the future. I'm just grateful that we still have Matt. It's just a privilege to be uh, able to be involved in his care and see that he made such good progress. I can't thank you enough from the bottom of, well, not my heart, but my heart. Um, and on behalf of myself and my family, I couldn't thank them enough. It's been, it's been a road and without, without an organization like that, it would have been a lot harder to get down. Tonight you have seen the amazing stories of heart disease survivors, Tom Hammond and Matt Varga. As we celebrate them, we also celebrate the advancements that make stories like theirs possible. The advancements that help those affected by heart disease and stroke to have more time with their family and friends. Tonight, we are also reminded of loss. In losing Carol Barr, we know that we still have work to do. Carol was passionate about the American Heart Association. She was my dear friend and neighbor, and we will continue to support the fight against heart disease in her memory. But Carol is not the only reason we are passionate about the American Heart Association. At the very same time that Carol Barr's funeral was going on, I got a call that my daughter-in-law was giving birth to my grandson, Woodson. Woodson's heart was not perfect, and he had congenital heart disease. His heart quit beating after five and a half hours. 
and he, he died in the arms of his mom and dad, Zach and Ashley. He left an everlasting imprint on our hearts. This is why Jack and I chose to chair the event and why we are asking for your support tonight. Though we are not together in person, I believe we are united in spirit in our desire to make a difference through our donations. So please give in honor of survivors like Tom and Matt and in memory of those we have lost like Baby Woodson and Carol. Thank you for your support of the American Heart Association's life-saving mission. Thank you all for your participation in the live auction. Remember that our silent auction is open until 9 p.m. tomorrow. Be sure to check out the amazing items, including one week in Kiowa at a beautiful five-bedroom home, four VIP tickets to the 2022 Breeders' Cup at Keeneland, four tickets to the Kentucky Derby, including breakfast with Chef Bobby Flay, a private plane to Kiowa Island for two for two nights with golf included, a two-day John Karloftis Best of the Bluegrass Tour, including bathroom, historic homes, horse farms, and distilleries. Several collectible bourbon packages, including a 10-year Pappy and a 12-year Pappy Van Winkle. Montage at Palmetto Bluff for two, and much, much more. Now, we have a special treat for you before we sign off. But first, we want to thank Jack and Carol Russell again for their leadership and thank all of our donors, sponsors, and table hosts for their support. Let's all give them a virtual round of applause. One more thing before we hear from our special guest. We are excited to announce that our 2022 Central Kentucky Heart Ball will be chaired by Jeff Kuntz of Wesbanko and his wife, Diana. Thank you both for your leadership and support. Now, to close out our night, here is Lexington's own Broadway star and actress, Laura Bell Bundy. Hey guys, Laura Bell Bundy here, congenital heart disease survivor. I'm going to be singing a rendition of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun from my recently released album, Women of Tomorrow. I'd like to dedicate this to Carol Barr. Fortunate one 